things are starting to look incredibly promising and nice, but we do have a little bit of a problem. Happy Knit in Public Day! I decided, because today is Knit in Public Day, or the day when this video is released, to do something special. So I am doing another knit challenge. Now, this video is obviously filmed before the Knit in Public Day, <laughs> the day that I'm gonna release this video, but um, I figured I would try to do something that I would be able to complete in two days. So only in 48 hours. And even though it's finally now warm enough to make like cotton tops, which I've been going totally bananas over. Um, yesterday I went to my local yarn shop and I picked up the loveliest shade of kind of pale banana milkshakey colors in Borset Alpaca and then in Double Sunday from Sunday, uh, from Sunday's gone. <laughs> and my plan is to hold this double and knit this puffy, fuzzy, uh, short sleeve sweater from Gunny um, that I think was in their collection like two years ago or something along those lines. And I actually happened across this sweater in real life in a secondhand shop, but even as a second hop, it was uh, very expensive. And I think like the original price I saw somewhere on the internet was over $400, which I don't know if that can be true. <laughs> it can actually be that pricey, but since it says that it's handmade, um, I guess it could be. And I've got these yarns for 50 euros. Now, arguably that's still quite a lot of money, like especially when you can go to, you know, any kind of like uh, fashion shop um, and get the sweater for like 20, 20 euros or less. Um, but now at least I know I'm gonna get it in 100% or it's not 100% wool but in like good materials I know who's gonna who has done the labor which is me and it's just gonna be a lot of fun and give me joy to make it so I'd rather spend that money um, to make it myself now will this be the most inconvenient garment that I have ever made quite possibly because why would you make a short sleeved wool sweater um, usually when it's cold it outside I want to wear something long-sleeved and when it's warm enough to not have to wear something long-sleeved I usually don't want to wear a wool sweater so <laughs> um, this might be that we're now just gonna sacrifice convenience over aesthetics and trying to be a little bit trendy <laughs> um, I have this vision and I would like to wear it with this dress because this has this yellow color in it and it's also short sleeve so I'm thinking you know chilly summer evening having this dress and then if it gets a little cold then I can put this over it but I have no idea, we'll see how it goes. All right, the first thing I need to do is I need to make a gauge swatch to check out my tension because I don't know um, how it is to knit with these yarns together. I've never paired these two yarns together. So I think I'm gonna use either a nine millimeter or 10 millimeter needle for this. Um, so that is the first plan, make a gauge swatch. Then I have my little notebook here, my pen, my measuring tape, and then I'm gonna try to see, figure out the construction. I was first thinking if I should make it just like a raglan um, sweater because I want to do it from top down but in the Gunny version you can totally see that it's not a regular sweater it's very much like the I think they first done the body in one piece and then they probably picked up more stitches along here the shoulder seam to get like this kind of puffy a bit like my dress here also has so yeah I'm gonna have to do some a little bit engineering and mastering here first before I get into it but first let's make a gauge swatch I'm also gonna go by to the cafe nearby don't want to talk there because I always think it's a little awkward when there's people around. <laughs> um, also, this is really nice because this entire day I've just been inside at my laptop. I took a morning run in the morning, then I've just been inside. I now finally sent all of the patterns in both English and in Finnish to my publisher for the book. So I am officially done. Or probably there's still gonna be like more things to come, but like the big chunk is done. So it just feels so nice to kind of reward myself with the challenge, which maybe kind of sounds a little weird, like reward yourself with more work. But when work is fun, that's just what you do. All right, onto the cafe. Okay. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurry in to cup my tea. I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When 
I return from the afterglow? Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on. Put me together. Take me back where I belong. All right, I have begun casting on, so I am doing this from bottom down. No. From top down <laughs> and I'm beginning by doing just the back the back yoke and I'm gonna try to make the whole yoke today to stay in schedule or to stay on on my timeline <laughs> so I've cast on 34 stitches and my plan is that those will be the back then I'm gonna pick up stitches for the shoulder seams here and then I'm essentially gonna shape the whole um, neckline on the front yoke uh, by doing first um, let me see decreases and then I'll increase and then I'll cast on for like the middle um, and then I'll knit those two pieces just back and forth until the armhole and then I will put them on a circular needle so then I'll start to knit them in the round and that way I can then adjust the length of it more easy um, and it's knitting up really quickly um, by the way can you tell I like this color. It's so funny. Like I didn't even realize it that I chose this uh, exactly the same kind of color, my sweater that I'm wearing at the moment, that this, but this one is just bought from the store. It's also much, much more thin than this uh, woolen sweater that I'm going to make. But so far, so good. And it's getting a little bit chilly, but I think I'm going to sit here for a while longer and then I'll probably head back home. morning it is Wednesday morning and we are about to head to the summer house that we have it's about an hour's drive from Helsinki it's a really gray day but that's okay it means more knitting time for me um, yesterday I managed to make the whole yoke it doesn't look like much yet especially since I have it on a pretty small cable so you can't really see it also like to, at the moment it looks a little uneven because I've gone back and forth and I'm knitting with such big needles but I think all that will be improved once I will block it and once I get all the remaining pieces um, then I don't think it's gonna be that visible. I am still a little bit worried about uh, the yoke being too narrow but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, I'm just used to making so oversized sweaters so that's why I think I'm a little like uh, iffy if it's gonna work out but I know that I need to have the shoulder seam really at the shoulder because otherwise the puffy sleeves will look just completely ridiculous. So I think it's gonna be okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with it. Uh, so I still have until tomorrow like afternoon to complete this. So I think we can do it if I don't run out of yarn. <laughs> so this is all the yarn that I have left. I'm like slightly worried about running out of yarn. So I think I'm gonna grab um, some extra and then it will just be like in another color. Um, so I need like one was with alpaca and then the Sunday or something similar to the Sunday yarn. So there I have this combo. Okay, so I'm gonna take these two with me just in case I run out. Um, so this is the same double Sunday and was with alpaca in just a different color. So then um, I'll just have to be creative with it and maybe make the color out of this color if I run out of the yellow yarn. to get some stuff in the car and I thought I'd take the opportunity to um, talk a little bit about my history of knitting because I don't think I've talked about that so much on this channel so I actually learned to knit from my grandmother when I was around I think I was around age five or six so my grandmother from my father's side she was a kindergarten teacher and she was really good at all kinds of like handicraft things um, and my first ever thing that I knitted, at least that I, as far as I can remember, was a pink pony. <laughs> 
um, me and my cousin, uh, who's five years older than me, um, we were, we would spend a lot of time out there with my grandparents. Um, it was really, really nice. They've both passed away now, uh, my grandparents, um, but I have really fond memories. So it's really kind of that traditional learning from your grandmother. Um, and in Finland, you also learn knitting in school. So I remember then when I went to school and we had uh, handicrafts and um, we would get taught to knit. Uh, I felt very proud that I could sort of help the other children because I already knew how to do it. So um, I just remember feeling kind of cool uh, that I knew this, but then, uh, and I would knit like on and off. Uh, and I remember when I was a teenager, that's when I had, like, I would knit a lot, um, especially at one point, I think around like 14. Um, and then it wasn't cool at all. <laughs> and uh, I remember even going like out in public to a cafe or something and trying to knit and it felt so awkward and just so uncool. Um, but now I think that has changed and I often see like in the metro or the bus people knitting. Paita alkaa näyttää paidalta. Food, 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 food. All right, the first proper try on. This is how far I've come. I think, I think we're gonna be okay. I don't think at all right now. It doesn't feel too small, if you can see. Um, so that was my worry all the time that this part was too tiny, but it doesn't feel too tiny at all. And also because I was able to cast on more stitches here for the underarms. So I really not like that it's not like too fitting here on the body. Um, so I think it's gonna turn out nice. I mean, it's still like many things can happen because I'm gonna make the collar and I think the sleeves are the thing that I'm most, not worried about, but excited and nervous about because a puff sleeve, um, even though I have like a lot of dresses with puff sleeves, there's always like finding that balance, like the right volume. Um, where it looks kind of chic or when it becomes kind of ridiculous and kind of like a masquerade outfit, if you know what I mean. So I think that's going to be like a challenge. So I'm definitely going to try to um, continue knitting today so I get the full body. So this is, I have these two left and then I have still like a full skein of each. So I think I'm going to use these for the whole body um, or until I run out and then so I have enough yarn for the sleeves even though I don't think I need well well hard to say because I don't know how much volume there will be but so far so good I am really really happy with the construction of it and now it's super nice weather I came out here to the summer place uh, we're gonna probably make sauna maybe I'll go for a run so so far really nice just done a workout. I use this channel called Growing Ananas. <laughs> um, she has really nice videos because there's not like a lot of talking, she just gets to the point, which I like. And we have the sauna is being prepared. I'm gonna go see if there needs to be a bit more water. I was thinking the other day about what I would do differently now when I've finally completed all the material for my knitting book. 
uh, which is actually as we speak now the layout for the book is starting so there's a person who's gonna do like the whole layout I'm not gonna do that myself I've done all the patterns I've had uh, she's called Heli she's helped me do the technical editing for the patterns then I've had people test knit the patterns and the texts I've written myself and then uh, there have been uh, two people helping me like reading the text to see that there aren't any like big errors and stuff <laughs> um, but like the and all the photos I've taken myself some Yuki has also helped me take um, but now kind of it's out of my hands in a sense which feels so so good and I've just been stressing about so many things and there were just like an endless amount of especially with the knitting pattern so many small things like uh, I feel like probably in the like it's probably humanly impossible <laughs> to make a knitting book without a single mistake so probably there are some small mistakes in there um, but at some point I just had to be like okay have to accept it you know it is done um, and then in July so that is happening now, right now and then in July hopefully if all goes to plan it goes to print which is so exciting um, and I can't believe that it's actually gonna be like a book it just feels so surreal um, and then I think we're like um, trying to get it out like August September I'm not really sure like with these kind of things this is the first book I ever make so I'm not really sure like what is realistic but I was thinking about like well first of all <laughs> if I would make another book or if somebody would suggest to me like hey let's make a knitting book uh, I would be like uh, nice but at the same time oh please no <laughs> because it has been pretty intense so I started work on this book back in so 2001 in no 2001 what 2021 <laughs> um, I think around September or October I think um, so I've been working on it for like a good eight or nine months and since I've done knitting patterns before yes I've always been a knitter I've followed lots of knitting patterns but you know I've always just done it by myself so and making so many patterns in at, at once or kind of at the same time um, that was pretty overwhelming and the learning curve has been steep uh, and well now it just feels like oh I'll never make a book again but I think that is just because it's just so close so probably when all of this like the hype of actually receiving the book and holding it in my hand once that gets passed probably I'll feel differently about it but um, what is was yes so what would I do different um, if I would do it all over again I think the thing that I struggled most with to be honest is that I had to do all kind of in secrecy so because I've been so used to sharing everything I do and I've kind of built this whole channel and my whole Instagram presence and just like everything around sharing what I'm working on and it all's like a pretty fast pace so probably one of the or one thing about that is that you get that dopamine hit or you get that feedback loop so that feels good you know you make something you present it to the world you get feedback and it feels good like you've accomplished something with this book I haven't even though I've shared snippets and sometimes it felt like oh am I sharing too much I still there's a, like so much that I haven't shared and um, so many things that I've just tried to keep secret so there's gonna be like lots of nice stuff to then show you once the book is actually out um, and of course some things that are only gonna be in the book um, so only those who buy the book will see and get um, so that has been a struggle to try to make sure I do my best for the book and really put in effort and the time um, at the same time feeling all the time very kind of con no like contradicted or um, in trying to also keep up or be active on YouTube and on Instagram and make sure that I have enough content for all the platforms so that has been um, a struggle and I felt sometimes it was just too overwhelming and probably I'm too over ambitious put too much pressure on myself it's just not possible to do everything well and then I've had to tell myself so many times like no Kika trust the process trust that if you do your best with this book uh, that it's gonna pay off in the end even though you know um, I probably like some opportunities that I had to kind of say no to because I was doing this book because I knew that if I would take too much on my plate I would not be able to do things well and I don't want to end up in a situation where I just have to do things like half well <laughs> if you know what I mean 
Um, so I hope, I hope it will be worth it. I'm sure it will be worth it. But um, that is something that if I would do it all again, I would plan for that in a better way. Or maybe this time then I would be more prepared, that I would know like, okay, I just can't be as active and can't share as much while I'm working on this bigger project. Uh, and maybe some other stuff that I would also do is I would start writing the patterns much, much sooner. I, I feel like the most fun thing is, of course, knitting. So that is what I did a lot. So I would knit a lot and I would knit something and then I would knit the, or make the pattern. And of course, as I got better, it went quicker to also make the patterns. But in the beginning, I feel like I should have just gotten started much quicker so that I would have because now I feel like I procrastinated often with the patterns and if I got stuck I kind of left that for a week or two and I was like oh no I have to do those patterns and I have to get them test knitting and you know all that and of course um, in the end like everything just bunches up and you're suddenly like oh my god all these small things that I felt like were small things that I was gonna handle suddenly you have so many things that you need to do all worked out pretty well in the end I feel like I was still pretty organized pretty well on schedule uh, although a little bit naive and too optimistic but those are probably like time management and also expectation on like all the other projects I could do at the same time those are probably the main things that I have a better understanding of now and I would also have probably prepared myself or be more organized for. <laughs> all right I am pretty pretty far on the body right now so I think I'm gonna knit like maybe five centimeters more and then I'm gonna start to do the rib I think because I don't want it to be too long because I want this to be a sweater that I can wear with dresses um, so I want it to be kind of not like really cropped but just like not past you know like or until the waist sort of um, so that if I wear a dress it won't look like it's like too long or it like hits just hits that spot so and uh, I think I'll have enough yarn. I think I'll have enough yarn for both the color. I want to do like a double folded color for this one, uh, definitely. And I think I'm going to do that in seven millimeter needles, but we'll see. Okay, a bit of a status update. Things are starting to look incredibly promising and nice, but we do have a little bit of a problem. But let me first just show you where I'm at in the progress. So I've knitted the whole body, I've knitted the collar, I just folded it double and attached it in place on the inside, just because I want to see how it looks. And let me see. <gasps> Ooh, I like it. So this is all the yarn that I have left. Um, this is all the yarn that I have from the balls of yarn and this is the sample swatch that I've ripped up to get a little bit more yarn. So safe to say, I am definitely not gonna have enough yarn for both the sleeves, which is, uh, it's always such a surprise. You know, I've been knitting for like more than like 30 years and still, um, assessing how much yarn you will, especially for a new project, it's just hard. So I only had three skeins of each and well, it was also because I wasn't sure if I was going to make something with sleeves or not. So um, and then I brought that extra yarn with me in another color, but I don't think I want to have another color in this. I really like this color. So my plan is to try <laughs> with these scraps to finish this sleeve. So I'll at least get one sleeve done so I can show you how it will look and then I can just kind of pose like this maybe for the thumbnail, <laughs> we'll see. Um, because now we're in the countryside so there's no way for me to get more yarn. I'll have to wait until probably like Monday and I still want this video to go up on Saturday for the worldwide Knit in Public Day. So um, if I would have had enough yarn I would probably or I would most definitely have been able to finish this but you know life happens. Um, you calculate your yarn wrong and um, that's just how it goes. So now I'll just knit a little bit more, then I'll make the rib for this. And I also decided to make the puff sleeves. Um, so I picked up more stitches here and here I only picked like every second stitch up. 
and I decided, because I was thinking also, should I pick up like double stitches for each stitch here to get that puff, but then I thought it, maybe it's nicer if the puff um, kind of comes from the gathers that I'll make at the rib, so I will think I'll knit two together um, before I'll make the rib, so the puff is going to be more like that instead of like that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I mean, I think this is gonna be super super nice. I think the construction works really nice and it's not at all too narrow here as you can see now. Um, so I'm also really pleased with that, that I didn't have to do like any big alterations. <sighs> but yeah, a little bit bummed out or frustrated that I don't have enough yarn. But, eh, onwards, onwards and upwards. <laughs> Alright, so I have, I mean, in theory, successfully, I would have been able to complete this challenge, but I, since I ran out of yarn, hey, this is how far I got, and this is the sleeve, um, this is the amount of yarn I had, um, I think it's not puffy enough, so I will probably have to redo this um, and make the sleeve longer and just puffier, so now I just decreased a lot under here, which kind of looks a little funky. <laughs> and the sleeve just, I don't know, I think it, this is not the design I was going for, but I am really happy with the body and the collar, and I think everything is going to work out, so I just need to get some more yarn and make them, yeah, just puffier. I think I will have to decrease, no, not decrease, increase some stitches here, so I get like that puff, and then also like the puff from here, so the volume, and then I'll try to make them probably like until here, but since I was determined to get this video out on uh, Worldwide Native Public Day, I am still gonna say that, okay, now this challenge, uh, I didn't manage to complete it completely uh, this time, but that's okay. So this is just part of, I suppose, <laughs> when you take risks and you design something from scratch. I will try to finish this sweater and then in the next video I'll show you the final result. Hopefully it will be closer to the vision and hopefully I will be able to get it done um, in a week's time. So come and watch that video after this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this. You can always come and say hi. I'm over at Kutubo Kik on Instagram. I'll also post then photos of the finished sweater over there. And if it turns out nice, maybe I'll also turn it into a pattern. All right. Thanks so much and see you in the next one. Bye!